Happy Easter. So every year, in accord with canon law, the church law, a priest is required to go on an annual retreat for a minimum of five days. So some years ago, I remember going on retreat and I was praying with Luke chapter five. It was a story of Peter who was out fishing and he caught nothing and he's up on shore washing his net and his boat's empty. And it was precisely at that moment that Jesus steps into his boat and says, Peter, put out into the deep. And with Christ in his boat, Peter hauls in this great catch of fish. And as I was reflecting on that passage, what hit me was, if Peter had been out by himself and had caught a great catch of fish and his boat was full, would have Jesus had room to step into his boat? It was precisely because his boat was empty that Christ was able to step in. And it profoundly hit me that it's often in the emptiness in kind of the low points of our lives, that Jesus steps into our life, that we encounter the Lord, not so much when our lives are full, but when our lives are empty. Well, on Friday, March 27th, Pope Francis addressed the world in this Ubi et Orbi address. And he began by saying, there's a thick darkness that's descended upon the whole world because of the pandemic. Our city squares are empty. There is a distressing void, an emptiness, he said, that we feel. We feel it in the air. We see it in people's eyes and our glances as people are keeping their social distancing. There's kind of worry and fear. Well, Pope Francis referred to the gospel passage where the disciples are on the boat and a turbulent storm stirs up. And he says, this is what we're all feeling like right now. We're all in this boat together in the world, and a turbulent storm has caught us off guard. It was precisely in that moment that the apostles ran to Jesus and they said, Lord, we're perishing, save us. St. Augustine says, in our times of difficulty, we should run to Jesus and cry out, Lord, we're perishing, save us. We got to wake up the Lord. Well, let's run to Jesus now in our emptiness that we're feeling in our anxiety, and in our worry. You know, one of the keys to prayer is to quiet ourselves and just first acknowledge what are the emotions stirring in our soul? And then we relate those to our Father. We turn those over to God. It's difficult for all of us right now. Pope Francis said, well, our schedules, our routines, our projects, they've all been interrupted. There is just disappointment over things being postponed and canceled. Many of us feel distant, cut off, isolated, empty, like St. Peter's boat. And it's precisely in this moment that the risen Lord wants to step into our boats, into our lives in a new and deeper way. Jesus is here. The good news of Easter is that Christ is risen. And we don't just celebrate Easter and think back on a historic event, but we remember Jesus is alive and risen here and now today. So turn to Jesus. Awaken Christ in your own life. Pope Francis said prior actually to the pandemic, for most of us, our lives were pretty full. We had our routines and our projects and our daily habits. And he said, he used this word, we've anesthetized ourselves in many ways with the distractions of the world. For most of us, we were on this kind of endless treadmill of activity. Our boats, our lives were very full. And to be quite honest, for many of us, we just didn't have time or room for God. And now everything has been stripped away. We realize with ever greater clarity in our emptiness that we need a savior, that we need Jesus. You know, Dr. Fauci, has been one of the leading doctors on the coronavirus. And he said last week, he said, he doesn't think the world will ever be the same. So he says, the pandemic has changed everything. There will always be kind of this looming threat out there of the virus. We will interact with each other differently. He was saying last week that we may, we should probably disband ever shaking hands again, which is gonna be hard for politicians and for priests. Well, I'd like to propose today on Easter Sunday that because of Jesus' resurrection, things are changed forever. Because of the first Easter, the world has never been the same. What has changed? Well, sin now has been conquered. Because 
of the death and resurrection of Jesus, we have truly and can truly be liberated from sin. If we don't believe that Jesus can break the shackles of our sin, then we empty the cross of his saving power. We can truly rise out of our old life of sin into new life of grace with Jesus. That's what first happened in our baptism. That's what happens every time we go to confession that sin is conquered in us and we experience new life in Jesus. And not only has sin been defeated, but we celebrate on Easter Sunday that our greatest enemy is conquered. Death has been destroyed. Christ is risen and death has no more power over him. Jesus promises us this gift of eternal life to all who have a living faith in him. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes and lives in me, even though he dies, will live. The resurrection of Jesus has changed everything. Sadness turns to joy. Despair turns to hope. Worry and anxiety give way to peace. Christ is alive. God is with us. We do not need to fear sickness or death. Jesus has conquered the grave. Everything has changed. You know, Dr. Fauci may be right. The pandemic indeed may change the world forever. We won't go back to things as usual. There will be a new norm. And I would suggest that perhaps that may be good. Let's not go back to the treadmill of activity, to our busyness. Let's not go back to filling our lives, our boats with endless distraction. Let's not go back to business as usual. Let's not go back to relying on our own self-sufficiency, so much so that we don't have room for God in our lives. No, let's live in the reality of this new emptiness we may feel. St. Paul says, our power lies in weakness. It's when we're confronted with our own limitations that we recognize our dependence on God, that we're not in control, that we need a savior. Our boats, our lives may feel empty right now, and that's okay. That's exactly the moment when Jesus steps into our lives in a new and deeper way. And it's with Christ in our boat that our lives will be full.